Irvin de Corno. I'm the senior brand manager at Hasbro for the for Europe, um, and I'm really, really, really excited to be here today. Um, we've been working uh, years now to have uh, our own presence in the London Comic Con, and we're bringing this to life. This is the second year that we're having um, some special, special guests for you to reveal some great, great products uh, to talk about how we do products, how we work with Marvel, and how we work with with Lucas. So um, please make some noise for us to welcome our two guests that are coming from the United States of America. Um, so please um, welcome our first guest, our global um, senior brand manager, Patrick Schneider. Come here! And Patrick, you work on? Star Wars, of course. Alright, and please make some noise for Ryan Ting working on Marvel! <laughs> Alright guys, please have a seat. After you, oh, after you. Oh, please, after you. Alright. You ready for this? Alright, I've been ready for this my whole life, Urban. I know you are. <laughs> Who? It's all yours. Alright. Oh, I have control of the clicker. That is, that is a lot of power here. All right, there we go. So we had the Imperial theme. We gotta have the main Star Wars theme. This works much better when we're walking into it, but it's all good. Uh, so we'll just kind of celebrate this music here. All right, it's zooming out, great. So glad to see you all. Uh, as Urban mentioned, my name's Patrick Schneider. I'm, the, I'm on our marketing team uh, for Star Wars for Hasbro. Best job in the world, love it. Uh, I've gotten to chat with a lot of you already at the fair. Uh, we're so excited to uh, just bring you through some of our current items, some of our recent reveals, and then as Urban mentioned, brand new exclusive reveals. You in the room will be the first in the world to see these reveals, so we're very excited. So let's see uh, what we have next in our deck. Alrighty, so this item. So just want to talk about this a little bit first, and I think Urban actually, yeah, lead us off. So before you do that, um, as I said, we're really excited to be here at the London Comic Con. Um, and as a regional team, uh, we're working with our marketers, uh, with the UK team that is here today. I'm really, really excited. Thank you guys for organizing this great fair. Um, yeah. Let's, let's have a round of applause for our UK team. Hooray! Um, so these guys make it happen, and uh, it's thanks to the team here and to the UK team that we're able to bring you guys um, exclusives for Europe. So this item that is available in our Hasbro booth um, for sale um, is actually um, a European reveal. So you guys are the first ones to be able to buy it globally, worldwide. Um, and I can see some cheers and some, yeah. some hat thumbs up. Um, so thank you very much. And do you want to take, tell us a bit about the product? Absolutely, yeah. So as Urban mentioned, you guys are getting this product before anyone in the US, wow, which is really cool. So what this product is, is it's an early release of Leia in her Hoth outfit. Uh, this was one of our most demanded figures. So early release of her, she'll be in the main line later. But then that Han Solo there is exclusive to this set. This is the only place to get that Han Solo. You'll notice he's in a brown coat. This is a, kind of an inside joke with Star Wars. Yeah, I'm seeing some nodding heads, yeah. Uh, depending on different formats, uh, Empire Strikes Back, Han's coat appeared blue or brown. Who knows, it's a mystery. Uh, so when we first released Han, he was with a blue coat, so it's kind of a nod to that inside joke. We've now re him in a brown coat, which is fantastic. Also, so I've read some chatter online from fans. That scene there, fans are correct, that is nowhere in the movies. That is a reimagining. You can see the, the copy on the box. That's an imagining of what that South Passage scene could have looked like between Han and Leia. So Han returning from uh, his adventure with the Tauntaun and Luke there in the South Passage with Leia. So uh, exclusive packaging, exclusive brown coat Han. It's on sale now in the booth. Uh, go get it uh, if you like the looks of it. So is it blue or is it brown? Uh, I, I don't know. It looks it looks brown to me. I don't it's know. Really brown. Decide for yourself. Um, Recent reveals. So we're going to take you through. We've revealed all of these in the past few weeks uh, or months or so at different fairs around, uh, different conventions around the world. Uh, very exciting news. Uh, we're going to recap with you guys right now before getting into some new content. So Force FX lightsabers. 
So Force Effects is our line of premium role play lightsabers. So we love our figural assortments, uh, but lightsabers are cool too. I've seen a lot of these around the con, uh, people carrying them around. In 2015, we refreshed our lightsabers with an accelerometer uh, to give it a more movie accurate sound. Uh, we did a lot of the main characters there in 2015 and 2016. We went dark this year because 2019 is obviously the 20th anniversary of what? Venom Menace. Venom Menace, the prequels, exactly. So we've got an exciting saber coming here to the UK next year. Urban, you want to tell us about it? Yes, so in case you didn't notice that it's Darth Maul, I'm sure you guys know that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I just had some time here to um, tell you about Force Effects lightsabers. Um, a lot of you guys, a lot of fans have been saying, you know, we cannot find effects lightsabers in Europe. Uh, when are you guys going to bring this in? What can we do? Um, so it's, it's great news that we've been working with the team here in the US to be able to bring this product um, in Europe. Um, so that's going to be uh, our first lightsaber effects for a long, long time now. Um, and we're going to bring that with our retailers. Um, the great news is um, you can buy one, but guess what? There's a connector with it. So when you get two, you get Dark Maul's weather, which is really cool. Absolutely. It's a great lightsaber. Obviously, Darth Maul, very cool character. First Force Effects lightsaber to Europe in a little while, so we're excited for that. Uh, but figural assortments, that's what we're going to talk about uh, kind of for the rest of this section. So six inch scale, uh, black series, one of the scales we love along with three and three quarters inch scale. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the stuff we've revealed recently in six inch scale. So first of all, the archive line. Urban, you want to tell us a little bit about this line and where it came from? Yes, definitely. Great, thank you. <laughs> it's almost as though we haven't scripted this out. Not at all. It's all improvised, right? It's all improvised. Um, so basically, this came with discussions we had with um, Patrick here, saying, our European fan um, didn't have the opportunity to buy into the early characters. Um, so they've been saying to us, you know, how can we get the early characters? Um, we want to have them again. Uh, but then again, our key core fans that have gotten these characters um, don't want to see the same um, product run again with the same packaging. So we say, well, we can create uh, an archive uh, kind of range where we're going to bring back old characters. Um, but they're actually a bit better because um, we have some innovation in our figures, which is... Absolutely, yeah. So our first wave of archive we announced at San Diego Comic-Con. You see them right here. Uh, so as Urban mentioned, this is basically like our greatest hits, our Hall of Fame. If you like the look of Black Series, and if you don't know what that is, stop in in our booth. You can see what it looks like. If you like the look of it, but you want those main Star Wars characters, this is the way to get it. So you can see the first wave right here. We've got Boba Fett and Fosk and IG-88, those uh, Epi Empire Strikes Back bounty hunters that we first launched a few years ago. Now we're completing the set. The archive will allow you to go back and get those initial figures, which is great. Uh, Luke Skywalker, obviously, the very first Black Series figure we ever did. Luke Skywalker, central to the saga. So he's coming back in the archive as well. And you can see here on the screen, the Luke Skywalker has our new photo reel deco, which Marvel launched in 2017. Thank you, Patrick. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't mention that in Paris, so uh, or I wanted to do here. But we started in 2018, just really transforms the facial deco. Uh, so this is a great opportunity for fans who have the figures already to get them with that improved facial deco. So looks great. I know, right? Thank you, Ryan. Uh, so this is our first wave. Eagle-eyed fans out there who have been in our booth the past few days might have noticed that we had IG-88 out originally in package and he's no longer in the booth. A uh, quick story there is that for cons like these, we want to bring out figures. These aren't going to be out until next year, but we want to bring them to show you what they look like. Honestly, those were early prototypes. Uh, the paint job was a little in process on our IG-88. We decided he was no longer an accurate representation, so we pulled him. The Luke Skywalker was close enough that we left him, so kind of a little peek behind the curtain there. Yeah, that kind of looks like him. But again, I want to say thank you very much to the team here because they're doing an amazing job, and this just shows how um, they're on it. Um, they're reading the blogs, they're reading um, all the things that you guys are saying uh, on the internet or with us directly. So just to show you guys how Hasbro um, is close to the fans, and we're, we're listening to you guys, and uh, thank you very much for all the feedback that you're bringing um, to, to our great range. Absolutely. So that's our spring 19 wave of archive. For fall of 19, sorry, summer of 19, we revealed these at New York Comic Con. I'm seeing some faces in the crowd who are there for that, which is great. Uh, so this is our next wave of Hall of Fame figures. So Anakin Skywalker, obviously the Skywalker saga, Star Wars is all about that character. The rise and fall of Anakin Skywalker is what those first six episodes are all about. 
Uh, one of our most popular figures sells on the aftermarket for over $100, so an obvious candidate for our archive line. Comes with his multiple heads, so you can see him before and after his fall. Uh, really kind of demonstrates that photo reel deco to great effect. Uh, and then I like to say, this is kind of an awkward transition, but if Anakin is Luke's real father, Yoda is kind of his spiritual or force father, so it's a little bit of a stretch, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice segue. I like it. I like it. So we had to get him in the line as well, and Steve Evans, our design director, this is one of his favorite characters in our archive line, because it really demonstrates that photo reel deco. He likes to say that Yoda was a good figure before, uh, the sculpt was fantastic, the facial deco was a little off, so applying that photo reel there really brings it home. So you have the real father, and then you've got uh, spiritual father. Yes, exactly. Uh, so what do you have? So the Biker Scout is not Luke's father in any way. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> basically, when we first launched the Biker Scout, he uh, came in a pack along with a speeder bike. We wanted to bring him out of that pack and put him into archives so that if fans didn't get him before, or if that higher price point was the speeder bike was prohibitive, and they just wanted the trooper, this is the way to do that. So this is our archive summer of 2019 line, which is great. So that's archive. Moving on now to our mainline six inch line we see Irvin. You want to tell us about this one, or? No, I'll go for it. All right, sounds good. I don't good. want to take it away from you. All right, that's very nice. You know that I love the series, right? <laughs> so this was also revealed at New York Comic Con. So this is an Imperial Rocket Trooper Commander. So the thing I love about Star Wars is it has so many different entertainment sources. Obviously, you have the movies, but you have the video game content, the animated content, and this was a great trooper from both the Battlefront uh, video game, but also the Rebels TV show. Really cool trooper variant, comes with that rocket pack, so wanted to get him into the line, and also as we revealed, as you can see here, he comes with a cool stand. So this is an example of very simple innovation. At conventions, fans like you come, they see our little stands that we pose our figures out on, and they're like, yeah, I'm seeing nodding heads again. They're like, we want stands. Like, it's so simple. If this seems easy, Hasbro, figure this out. So in our exclusives for next year, and we might expand beyond there, we're including a very simple innovation. It's a stand with a little boot there for the foot to slide into. You no longer have all the issues with pegs and peg holes, and because of that, you can pose out the figure in a lot of dynamic poses. So surely you need some glue to keep them down, right? I'm glad you asked, Ryan. Actually, no. <laughs> no glue what? is required for the posing of those figures. So we didn't even script that out. That is the pure, natural banter that you get up here on the stage. Pure time. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know about that. But so that is our Rocket Trooper Commander. You're going to see that stand in other figures and might roll out wider than our exclusives after 2019. So coming up next, uh, another exclusive, and this will be in the UK, this is at shared retail. So it is not exclusive to one retailer, it will be broader than that. So my UK team has informed me that we should be able to see this figure in the UK. I'm seeing thumbs up, that's great. Uh, next is another shared, shared retail exclusive. So this diorama right here, if any of you made it over the pond to San Diego Comic-Con or HasCon, which we like to say is the most important convention of all, it's the Hasbro convention, we had this fantastic diorama showing all of the scenes of A New Hope to celebrate the 40th anniversary. So wait, are you selling the whole diorama now? Uh, that, that would be a very <laughs> high price point. That's our next HasLab, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> So no, so this diorama told all the scenes, and we had to create some custom pieces, some custom accessories and custom head sculpts for that diorama. And so honestly, again, we got feedback from the fans saying that one of those head sculpts in particular was very cool looking. So what you guys asked for, we sometimes, hopefully more, deliver. Luke Skywalker in his Stormtrooper disguise, the Escape from the Death Star disguise. So obviously that's Luke Skywalker in the trash compactor, comes with a new head sculpt, and it's actually different than the one we did for San Diego Comic-Con. We improved it, comes with that comm link, so we can have that conversation with 3PO, you know, 3PO, where are you? Uh, so that is our Stormtrooper Luke with wet hair, shared retail exclusive for 2019. Very exciting. And again, just another way to show you guys how, you know, we hear you guys. Uh, just come talk to us whenever you have the opportunity. We're really, really happy to get your feedback on anything. So literally, come and talk to us in the booth, because this came from fans at San Diego Comic-Con saying, we want that, we will give you money for that. And so we, it's, a good, it's a good exchange there. Yeah, you just might make something happen as well. Absolutely. Cool. Coming up next in our six-inch line, 
we see this figure right here. So Dr. Aphra, so like I said, so many different entertainment sources for Star Wars, and comic books are one of the greatest. We're at uh, London Comic Con, after all. So Dr. Aphra is a new character from the Star Wars comic books. She actually won our vintage fan vote uh, held at Celebration a year and a half ago. So we released her in the vintage line, and fans of the Black Series said, well, that's great, but you know, where's mine? We want a six inch Aphra as well. So again, you ask, we try to deliver. So we're launching this figure in 2019. She comes with a removable vest and a removable helmet to give different looks of the character because different artists draw her different ways. Um, and it's actually a different sculpt than the three and three quarters inch one, again, to provide different variety. So Dr. Aphra coming in 2019. Now, of course, Dr. Aphra doesn't go anywhere without her two comic book droid companions. So we're also releasing Triple Zero. Uh, this is, he's a torture droid, it's very funny. It's a modified protocol droid. So it kind of it does a combination of very polite phrases, but then also torturing people, which is great. Um, and that's funny. It's very funny. funny. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You uh, thank you. Uh, so Triple Zero coming in the line, and then BT-1, the modified astromech droid, uh, again with those pop-off weapons, he's kind of a very violent droid as well. So, uh, great set coming in 2019, Dr. Aphra and her two comic book droids. So, coming up next in our line, what do we have next? Urban. This is a lovely Bye -bye. montage. You're yes. going to talk to us a little These people are tired of hearing me jabber. You're going to talk to us a little bit yes. about the prequels about and prequel prequels. love. Uh, do you guys love the prequels? You don't like the prequels? Oh, uh, it's a big debate. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's a big debate, right? So um, I personally like Jar Jar Binks. I know people are going to kill me for that. Woo! Misa, agree, oh. Urban. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did a little Yoda there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, you know, fans have been asking us to do more of the prequels characters as well. Um, so we actually had a reveal uh, before yesterday um, Paris, yeah. in Paris, in the Paris Comic Con. Uh, we've been traveling a lot. Um, um, so basically, we had uh, a reveal that we're going to show you later on. But wait a minute, we might have something linked to that as well later on today, just for you guys, right? Absolutely, yeah. So what Urban is hinting at is that we will be revealing a new prequel Black Series character in this panel, not yet, in this panel, there's a little teaser, so stick around for the next uh, 30 minutes or so, Kate's and you will see a new prequel character, but before, I'm seeing, I'm seeing some wide eyes, that's good, <laughs> but before that, we're going to recap this handsome gentleman right here, General Grievous, I'm seeing, yeah, clapping hands, yeah, yeah, let's give it up for General Grievous, there we go, all four of them, four thumbs up, all four thumbs up, exactly. So General Grievous, this is a great character in the line. So we have tried to do General Grievous for a long time. There have been rumors flying about him. We've tried to get him in the line, but honestly, he's a big guy. Like, he is, he is big bone. Like, literally, you can see his bones. Uh, he just wouldn't fit into our main line assortment. And we tried, we were like, maybe we don't need his cape. And then we were like, that's stupid. Of course he needs his cape. Maybe we can do two arms instead of one. Like, And then ultimately we were like, no, it doesn't make sense to compromise. Like, Black Series is a premium grade collector line. So instead of trying to force him into a smaller price point, let's create a new price point, do him right. So we're bringing him out in a new deluxe line. He's seven inches tall because Grievous is seven feet tall in the movie. Uh, he comes with four arms that separate, they snap into place. If you just want that two arm Grievous, exactly. Um, he comes with all four lightsabers. The soft goods are really what drives the value here. It's double sided soft goods uh, printed on both sides. It has pockets in the soft goods cape for the lightsaber hilts. Um, so we really strove for movie accuracy here. Uh, it's a great item coming out in 2019. We're really excited about it. Kicking off the prequel love in our six inch figures. And more to come later. What's that? And more to come And later. more to come, exactly. All righty. So rolling on with our six inch figures. So this figure here was revealed at Mexico's unboxing toy convention. So part of what we're doing this year, and we've talked about this going back to San Diego, is that we, we kind of woke up and we were like, Star Wars is beloved around the world. Like, obviously, there are a huge fandom around the world. Why are we only going to San Diego Comic-Con and New York Comic-Con? And we came to London Comic-Con last year and had a huge reception. So we've expanded this year. So we revealed this figure. We went down to Mexico. That was a rough trip to try to convince someone to go on. Uh, we went down to Mexico, revealed this figure, Han Solo in his Minban Trooper outfit. Did you want to say anything about him, Urban, or...? All right, he's, he's giving me all the glory. 
Um, so this is Han Solo from that scene. The great thing about this figure is that the helmet is removable and then goes back on. So obviously, if you want to build out a diorama from the Mimban trenches scene, you can just pop that helmet on and he becomes an instant army builder. So great figure revealed at Mexico Unboxing Toy Convention. Also revealed on the road. Sorry. Yeah. I just want to say we get more reveals in Europe. That's all I'm saying. It's true. Three times the reveals. Exactly. Uh, also revealed on the road was this character right here. Oops. Dryden Boss, also from the Han Solo movie. Obviously, Paul Bettany, very cool actor. Our Marvel friends uh, love him as well. The Vision. The Vision, one of the many actors that are in both the Star Wars and Marvel universes. Uh, so he's that great villain. He's got kind of both of his weapons there. Uh, sculpted cape, uh, so really cool figure, also coming out in 2019. Actually, I have a question for the crowd. Absolutely. Can you name any other actors that are both in the Star Wars and the Marvel franchises? Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson, that's an easy one. He's my favorite. Any other one? Yeah, absolutely, that's a good one, yeah. Pat Amidala, uh, Mads Nicholson, the, the list goes on and on. What was your favorite you said the other day? We just saw him earlier, Ray Park. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. What's that? Natalie Portman, absolutely. Jane Gray, right? Jane Gray, is that her name in Marvel? I don't know. Jane Foster. Jane Foster. I don't have to know anything about Marvel, it's okay. <laughs> That's why I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, in any case, yeah, so Paul Bettany, six inch line, Dryden Boss, great figure. Next up, so Urban mentioned this, we just revealed this two days ago in Paris. This kicked off our line of prequel character reveals. Uh, so this is the first time people in London are seeing her. So Padme Amidala, obviously kind of the mother of all Star Wars uh, in the prequels. Uh, so a couple tidbits on her. So people have asked online, uh, she does have Natalie Portman, very well known for moles that she has, very beautiful moles. Um, so we have sculpted those into the figure, again, movie accurate uh, in every detail. Um, and also, this image that we took, uh, fans online have noticed that this is a beautiful image, but it doesn't look as close to Natalie Portman as images that have surfaced from Paris Comic Con. Again, that's because these images we honestly took about three months ago, because it just it's a long process to get them finished, get them approved. Uh, so this was a little earlier in the development process. Uh, the figure that we brought to Paris was an early mod, an early production sample, so that's a bit further along. So the images that you're seeing, I don't have to do the jet, I think. The images that you're seeing from Paris are closer and will be essentially what the final figure looks like. So uh, we're really excited about that, but excited to bring Padme Amidala into the line. And again, she will be joined by a friend from the prequels, or maybe not a friend, we don't know, but a character from the prequels by the end of this presentation. I was gonna say, did you spoil it? Wait, I did not, no, I caught myself. Maybe, maybe that was a little Jedi mind trick. We'll see, we'll see at the end. So coming up next for us, so vintage collection. So, so wait, before we do this, so who out there collects the Black Series, the six inch scale? Yeah, there we go. Who out there is fans of the vintage scale, the three and three quarters inch? All right, good, so mixed crowd, that's good. That's what I like. We love both of these scales. Both of them absolutely have a place in the line. So vintage collection, obviously three and three quarters inch scale, kicked it all off, really revolutionized uh, action figures. Before that, there was no three and three quarters inch scale. Uh, the story, if you haven't heard it, is an executive kind of put his fingers out and said that's the size the figures need to be. They took a ruler, measured it, and that is the world they created because it allowed those vehicles and those play sets and the whole galaxy of Star Wars in three and three quarters inch scale. So let's take a quick look, Urban, Fox, yeah. question. I was just going to say about our European strategy on vintage as well, so for the new wave. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Let's, Let's see it. what we've got for vintage. So, this, we revealed at New York Comic Con as well. So, vintage is, I think, the one expression where the packaging is as important as the product. Uh, we love our Black Series packaging, absolutely, but vintage packaging, so iconic. You know, that double or single bar with the logo and the movie still, again, goes back 40 years. So in the past, we would reveal products. We would kind of have, you know, this big lead up, this big uh, excitement, revealing the products, but then the packaging would just kind of show up at a store somewhere and someone would snap a picture. So we decided it was important to start revealing the packaging as well. So we revealed this packaging at New York Comic Con, uh, Claw 2 and the Scarif Stormtrooper in our January 1st of 2019 wave. So Claw 2, we did some researching into that character and we discovered that Billy D. Williams' son 
actually played Klaatu, he was the, the extra or whatever, who played Klaatu in the movie, uh, and that is kind of the reference for the scale of the figure, the size of that sun. Uh, so that still right there is a still, uh, it's a, uh, just a shot from the movie set. Uh, it wasn't taken from the movie itself, someone just ran around with the camera and took the picture. So that's how we got that, and the Scarif Trooper is something similar. Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, in some of these great products, uh, you get images that are, doesn't exist anywhere else, right? Yeah. So you guys get really, really great sources from doing this. Absolutely, yeah. So we see our packaging here for our Scarif Trooper and our Klaatu Guard. Also in our January first wave of vintage is Salt Marais there. I pronounce it wrong every time. Also known as Yak Face, but in the vintage collection, he will be Salt Marais and then Princess Leia Organa in her boosh disguise. So some fun details about these packages. So Princess Leia, you'll see up there, she has kind of a, a, an interesting, odd little blister for her helmet. And I've read online from fans asking, you know, it looks a little weird, why did we do that? Well, it's an homage to how, homage, yeah. Uh, that's almost as good as you get with French. Yeah, that's, that's the most French I do. So it's an homage to the original figure. The original figure had that helmet in a little separate blister, so we wanted to recreate that for this release. It also has Salt Marais there. Eagle-eyed fans will notice that the arm, up or down, we had to Photoshop that image so that it matched the original because we couldn't find the original image. It doesn't exist anymore as far as we know. So we had to take another image that was taken a few seconds later with the, the arm up and Photoshop it down. So fun little behind the scene tidbits on the development of our packaging. I just love your creativity on finding solutions for these. Hey, you know, we're proud to think outside the box. Be creative. So that is vintage packaging. Vintage figures, so this figure was also released at New York, or revealed at New York Comic Con. Another shared retail exclusive. So this is Han Solo in his trooper disguise. Again, kind of a theme, escape from the Death Star theme here. So Han Solo, uh, we're kind of tweaking this and retooling it. Uh, we've gotten the tooling right. I've uh, applied the photo reel deco to the head. So this is now the quintessential Han, tro Han trooper disguise vintage figure coming out in 2019 to shared retail. Very exciting. Also revealed was our 41st Elite Core Trooper. So this is our third stab at this figure. Third time's the charm. First time we did, I'm gonna get these details wrong, but first time we did it, we had the deco wrong. And so we released it a second time, but we still, I think on the, the legs and arms, still had the gray deco wrong. So this is the third time we're doing it. We're getting it right, getting it out there. Uh, vintage card back in 2019 in shared retail. Our 41st Elite Corps Trooper. Imperial Assault Tank Commander, also revealed at New York Comic Con. So we came out in our booth, you can see we have our Imperial Assault Tank Driver. Uh, Rogue One, uh, talking with fans. Who out there likes Rogue One? Yeah. Yeah, Woo! absolutely, I'm seeing the hands. So a lot of fans consider Rogue, Tro Rogue One to be part of the original trilogy. It's in that same style, the same excitement, atmosphere, obviously the same time frame. So lots of Rogue One love. So we're coming out with the Imperial Assault Tank Commander uh, to pair with the driver that we currently have in our booth and is out in stores right now. And the final figure that we revealed at New York Comic Con, Luke Skywalker in his crate outfit. So obviously Luke Skywalker, again, central figure of all Star Wars. We did his vintage character from episode seven in his long flowing robes and now Luke Skywalker crate. I won't spoil episode eight if you haven't seen it, but obviously pivotal scene in the movie. Very cool look for Luke. I think everyone in this room has seen it. I don't, I don't know, I don't know, you never want to see it in the movie? Yeah. There we go, nodding heads again. So, wonderful. So vintage line reveals, we've got more. So this figure also released at New York, uh, sorry, Mexico Unboxing Toy Convention. So we talked about the packaging. So this is Princess Leia Organa Bush, first time on a vintage card back. A great character from the original trilogy. Vintage card back for the first time. And revealed at Canada Fan Expo is Captain Phasma. Obviously Gwendolyn Christie, cool character from the new trilogy, on a vintage card back for the first time. Go for it, I was gonna say, what time? So, um, what's that? I think the fans here are here to see how home we really Absolutely. I'm getting we've, jealous here because you're showing a lot we've of got, We've got one more. So Chewbacca. Got some tidbits to get out about Chewbacca. So we revealed Chewbacca at Paris Comic Con. Chewbacca, we did not announce at Paris Comic Con what card back he would be on. Now, there's been some chatter online, but we're announcing here at a con for the first time 
Fans, fans have wanted him on both the Return of the Jedi card back and also the A New Hope card back. So let's see what people think here. Who would want Chewbacca on his Return of the Jedi card back? Okay, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this because we've already decided, but who wants him on the A New Hope card back? All right, I heard some louder screams there. That's good because it will be on the A New Hope card back. So classic double bar, Star Wars Kenner, Chewbacca, very exciting, revealed at Paris Comic Con. This is, you can talk about this yeah, if you want, or? definitely. So, um, again, this is um, a great discussion we had over the phone with, uh, with Patrick saying, you know, a lot of our fans also want those key core characters coming into Europe. So, um, based on the demand we had in Europe, we created a specific wave just for Europe with all the key core characters they can have at the same time. Uh, so, for those who weren't able to collect these, uh, we're bringing all of them, um, all of the, um, the big um, core characters for us. Just for Europe, a specific way of based on demands that we've had from our fans saying, you know, I want this character or the other. So there you go, guys. You asked and we delivered. Absolutely. All right, coming up next, this is the last thing before our new reveal. So digital content. Uh, this is actually cool. I like this. So we know that at Hasbro, we kind of have these this proprietary information, historical information behind the scenes. We know that we've done some behind the scenes stuff in the past. Uh, at our London uh, Comic Con panel last year, we did a whole deep dive into behind the scenes on our, actually our Luke Skywalker Jedi Master Black Series figure. So we're gonna be releasing some digital content later this fall that kind of pulls back the curtain both historically and behind the scenes. So we wanted to just share that with you right now. So first up, uh, as an asset, again, kind of the cool thing about our Black Series and Vintage figures is the dioramas that fans make in that we make. So this demonstrates some of our Black Series figures in their dioramic element. So we can see it right here. Or maybe we can. Again, maybe. There we go. Maybe a little more volume. is a behind the scenes, what we're calling a screen to shell of our Black Series Dubat creature that we released earlier this year. Take a look. is a historical look at Star Wars speeder and swoop bike toys. The FSNS swoop bike from Solo is the latest and greatest in this toy timeline. But we've actually done multiple versions of both speeders and swoop bikes. The first ever Kenner speeder bike came out in 1983 after the theatrical release of Return of the Jedi. The 90s saw the first swoop bike, inspired by Shadows of the Empire. This bark speeder was repainted several times after Revenge of the Sith. And then we updated the classic Imperial speeder bike for the Black Series. But with its unique design, incredible size, and movie accurate details, the Empress Nest Swoop Bike sets a new standard. And the same format for our Darth Vader helmets throughout the years. Mm, the daddy of them all. The Black Series Darth Vader helmet is the latest addition in this toy timeline. But we didn't actually make a Vader helmet until the early 2000s. Designed using photos from the 1980s set, this version had an electronic chess box extension that played real movie phrases. The second version had that shinier Episode 3 gloss and housed all the electronics in the dome. The 2018 Black Series helmet detaches into four pieces, has movie-accurate sound effects, and is the first ever with a fully decorated interior. This truly delivers the complete Darth Vader experience. 
So again, fans at London Comic Con, you guys, this is the first place we're showing that content, which is very cool. You can check it out in our booth as well if you didn't get it all here. I will be coming out with more later. Alrighty. So, early this, finally. you've been very patient. Who's ready for some London Comic Con exclusive reveals for the first time ever? Yay! Oh, alrighty. We have two of them, They're both very exciting. First one will be in our vintage scale. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. Alrighty, let's hear it. This one, classic character. Let me give you a little hint. This will be a bad impression, but beep, beep. Beep, beep. That's terrible. All right, R2-D2. So this is what we like to call a smart repack. So we're putting R2-D2 onto a vintage card back for the very first time. He's never been on a vintage card back. We're using a modified Build-A-Droid skull, dedicating it to astromech form. He has a removable third leg to provide alternate poses, uh, six POA to provide different looks. And again, so that there's no confusion, R2-D2, the card back he is on, will be classic A New Hope. First 12, R2-D2. So, very exciting figure there. If you have any questions about him, feel free to jump up in our Q&A at the end. For our final reveal, I have a minute left. It's gonna be our other scale, Black Series. I promised you another prequel figure to join General Grievous and Padme Amidala. Let me give you a little hint. When you see this figure, you will say, Roger, Roger. It's a battle droid! Yeah! Alrighty, so we're excited to get these guys into the line. Great army builder. So I've got two images here. You can see the images I don't have do not have him folding up, but the figure will <coughs> fold up. He has the, the head telescopes out of the body, uh, just like he did in the movie. Uh, he has, uh, the backpack is removable, and we have alternate shoulder blades so that you can army build and provide different looks. The antenna telescope out as well, so great versatile figure. We're gonna have both of those figures on display in the booth after this panel, and I literally finished right on time. Right on time. And we're gonna do the Q&A later on. Yeah, about, absolutely. Um, Star Wars and Marvel. Thank absolutely. you very much, uh, Patrick. Please, give it up for Patrick from Star Wars. Thank you. Give it up for Patrick. And now give it up for what's coming next, Brian the Marvel Master! Alright, so let's talk more where we are at Comic Con after all. So we want to, again, thank you all for coming. Patrick, Irvin, and I were here last year um, at this very location, London Comic Con. So this is our second annual appearance, so thank you for coming out to see us again. We had a huge year for Marvel, so many movies, so many announcements. Thank you for keeping up with all the coverage and the reveals, and we're no signs of slowing down for 2019. I just want to send out a quick plug for the hashtag Hasbro Toy Picks. So we know a lot of you guys love to show off your collections, show off your dioramas, your cool uh, poses and photos. So continue using that hashtag for all of your Hasbro toys, especially Black Series and Marvel Legends. I love to, to mine this for great content, for presentations like this, so keep posting your work and maybe you'll make it up here on my slide uh, next time around. So this is some uh, of the latest examples that I just pulled down. All right, let's jump into Marvel. So as we know, right, 2018, we're still in the midst of it. This has been the biggest year ever for Marvel. So many films, you guys have all seen these, right? We've kicked off the year with Black Panther, which introduced us to Wakanda and the whole new world there. That movie set all kinds of box office records. Um, love to see more of Black Panther uh, in the future, hopefully. We also had the convergence of everything in Infinity War. Irvin, you saw that, right? What did you think of Infinity War when it finally came together? Snap. Snap, I'm a big fan. What's gonna happen in 2019, we don't even know, so uh, stay tuned. And then we had uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, which was a great, you know, humorous movie. We got to see uh, Scott back uh, with uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp there, and um, keep it going. So those were the uh, big MCU films this year. And then we also had the Sony film. So Venom out in theaters now, Tom Hardy bringing that character, a new iteration of him to screen, that's still in theaters. And then we're super, super excited for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the first animated feature length uh, Marvel movie that's gonna be coming out around Christmas time. We have a full range uh, of kid products and collector products for this as well. So come by the booth to check out the reel uh, for that. And I really like it because you can see we have uh, entertainment, but both products for all ages, right? So we've got Venom, uh, which is an R-rated movie, but then we've got also uh, Spider-Man, which was just a uh, picture wedding. So we've got both entertainment and both products for everyone right there. Showing the breadth of our range. 
That's right, Urban. And if that wasn't enough, we also had another friend in 2018, right? Don't forget about Wade. Deadpool 2. Great to see Cable uh, and Domino on the screen for the first time. And then Ryan Reynolds here on his Instagram teased some, you know, future news this Christmas with the with a scene that was never before seen. Uh, so maybe there'll be more Deadpool news uh, for Christmas. Who knows? Uh, we part of having all this great entertainment right we were able to activate fantastic product lines for fans of all ages as Irvin said so here's a quick look at our movie lines for this year so starting off with Black Panther we had great role play we had Black Panther's vibranium claws we had Shuri's gauntlet we had feature masks feature figures super fun uh, line for Black Panther moved across uh, to Infinity War of course we had the nerf assembler gear line which is powered by nerf and you can assemble your customizable weapon you can make the ultimate Avengers weapon here we had more Titan figures. We had new six inch figures. Um, the Titan figures are powered by the new Titan FX backpacks. We also had play sets and Hero Vision as well. So big year for Avengers. Moving along to Ant-Man and the Wasp, even though it is the uh, smallest of films because they shrink down, we had a, you know, a fun line here, really so focusing. There, Thanks so Patrick, I try. Uh, so yeah, really highlighting the Wasp here. This is the first time that a female superhero has co-headlined a movie. So we had tons of Wasp action and feature figures, masks, um, legends and Titans as well. I personally love that mask, um, the Anna mask. It's a great um, mask. Where you can actually have different ways to how you see um, with a uh, fish eye kind of look and then uh, have like a small like a wasp look. That's right, it's, it's really a cool three in one. Yeah. Three in one. And then rounding out the year, as I mentioned, we're so excited for Into the Spider Verse coming out soon. We have you know, uh, really celebrating a lot of the characters in that Spider-Verse from Spider-Man Noir and his web blaster there to Spider-Ham uh, to SPDR. We well, can't wait to see these guys on screen uh, after this awesome line as well. And I wanted to touch quickly on Mighty Mugs. We launched Mighty Mugs actually for the first time here in London. So we still have more mugs coming out this year. This is the most expressive collectible that Hasbro has ever made. It's across Marvel and Star Wars. Each figure features three different expressions. So you see, you know, happy, sad, angry, you know, smirking. Uh, we have a, a great line of all the characters from this year, from Thanos to Ant-Man and the Wasp to Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and even Venom and Deadpool. So go out and get those mugs. We have two global convention exclusives for sale in the Hasbro booth. The first up is based on the uh, Netflix shows. Urban, have you watched any of those? All of them. All of them? And I can't wait to see the, the, the end of the third season of the Daredevil. I know, I'm three episodes into Daredevil season three as well and can't wait to finish it. So this is our Defenders Rail Authority. It comes in what us Americans would term a subway car uh, here. This beautiful deluxe packaging, it's really shiny. And I love that's, that's exactly the scene from, uh, from the Entertainment, right? Yep, yeah, when they're all riding really cool. in, in the subway there. So here you've got the four core Defenders. You've got Daredevil with an all new Matt Murdock unmasked head sculpt. You've got Luke Cage for the first time. You've got Jessica Jones without her jacket. And then for the first time we have Danny Rand, the iron fist there on the right side with his glowing fist. And then we have Colleen Wing as well for the first time ever. So a great five pack of Defenders figures, go pick this up in the booth. I'm just going to say that, I've never told you this. Um, this reminds me of that secret scene in Avengers where you have all the superheroes eating a burger. Um, the secret scene oh, the shawarma scene, scene yeah. yeah. So if you can make that happen, having a, like a restaurant scene and all of them eating a burger, this is my request in the Lana Langston bar. All right, so maybe you'll see a shawarma uh, global convention exclusive next year. Uh, but until then, uh, we have one more item for sale. This is really celebrating the Marvel Studios' first 10 years celebration, which has been going on this year. And as you can see here, it's based on Captain America. So we love this film. This is one of my personal favorites, 2011 Captain America, the first Avenger. The first time we saw Cap and Red Skull battle it out on the big screen. Uh, this is celebrating the villain in that movie, actually, the Red Skull. So for the first time, you get the long trench coat version of the Red Skull with his little... T uh, Tesseract accessory, but what, what my favorite part about this is that it comes with a life-size battery-powered LED glowing pulsating Tesseract so you can hold the power of the uh, Infinity Stone in your hand. You can well. actually hold it here in Lado Yeah, come right? check it out at the booth. It's really fantastic. It comes in a super deluxe collectible package that you can take the Tesseract out and put it back in for display. It's got some great, you know, uh, sketches and, and bio on the inside as well, really bringing that flavor of the movie out. So those are our two global convention exclusives. As I mentioned, 
2018 is a huge year for Marvel Studios, celebrating uh, 10 years of blockbuster films. We actually are through 20 films, can you believe it, since 2008. It all started with Iron Man 1. We've made it through 20 films through Ant-Man and the Wasp, and we've got two more films that will wrap up Phase 3. We have you know, uh, Captain Marvel coming out next year, as well as the still untitled Avengers 4 film. So I'm gonna go ahead and play you a quick clip of this. What's fantastic about this line is that we have 10 items and they each focus on a different film from that whole time span. And then if you collect all of the packages, they will make a complete concept art mosaic of sorts. So I'll just play this for you right now.
we've made. This is Thanos' Infinity Gauntlet. Pretty, pretty cool. Hey, that's high praise from the man himself. I'm not going to argue. Thank you, Ryan. I give it up to Ryan for this great, great product. This, this, is, is, uh, this is the greatest tour that we've made, and that is pretty cool. He also said that. You are pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, so you also see this in our booth. We, uh, in addition to the Infinity Gauntlet for our premium roleplay line, we have the Black Panther electronic helmet coming out just about now. We'll be celebrating that great film from earlier this year. This is a full-scale, you know, helmet with all that great um, sculpting and intricate details. You've got the eyes that can open and shut with the press of a button, and then it has, of course, the LED uh, vibranium-powered effect that it really glows. So come check that out, try it on, have some fun in our booth as well. Speaking of Black Panther, the uh, first Black Panther Legends Wave was a huge success. We couldn't wait to do more, so we're going to rush these out uh, by the end of this year sometime. This is Black Panther Wave 2. We revealed this in San Diego. So this is an all-movie Build-A-Figure wave. We have M'Baku, leader of the Jabari tribe, as the Build-A-Figure, and then we've got some great new characters, right? We've got Ulysses Claw for the first time on the far right there with an arm cannon. We've got the military look of Eric Killmonger with his tribal mask. We've got another of the Dora Milaje. We even got Black Panther's father, T'Chaka, in the middle there, as well as two new versions of uh, Black Panther that are going to have Chadwick Boseman alternate heads. So a fantastic movie wave uh, later, later this year. I'm going to quickly go through some of the 2019 reveals we've done thus far. So, uh, in our first event, first and second Avengers uh, Legends waves this year, we put out Thanos as a build a figure. He was also in our 10th anniversary line. We had Proxima Midnight there and the big bad guy, Cole Obsidian. He was the build a figure for wave two. But everyone's been asking, Hasbro, where is the rest of the Black Order? Are you only going to do three of them? And so, in New York, we said, no, rest assured, coming in 2019, you will be able to complete the Black Order as you saw them in Infinity War. So we have on the left there, Corvus Clave with his trademark uh, spear staff there. Great fight scene with Scarlet Witch and Vision in that film. And then we're also bringing Ebony Maw out as well. We're doing the shh, right? A really creepy science scientist guy. Uh, we're not saying where these items will go necessarily, but they will be out uh, in some form of, or another in 2019. So look out for them. We also, you know, are super excited. This is the next big film coming out. The trailer dropped recently, Captain Marvel. It looks fantastic. It's taking us back to the 90s. We get to see a two-eyed, younger Nick Cage, for the, or, uh, Nick Fury, I should say, for the first time. Uh, so too we many were, Nicks. Too many Nicks. Uh, Mace Windu, right? Uh, so in addition to the movie figures, we revealed just two of these uh, two days ago at Paris Comic Con. We've got a comic-inspired Janice Bell there in his Kree costume. We also have a French uh, Marvel villain, super villain, in the Grey Gargoyle. And then the build figure for this wave is going to be the Kree Sentry, the big purple robot on the right there. I was going to say, I really like how you uh, revealed in Paris um, Grey Gargoyle, who's a French character. So I wonder what we're going to reveal today. Oh. Do you think there's some British characters in that in the Marvel? Marvel? Oh, there could be. Yeah. There could be. That's a good. That's a good tease for later. Thank you. Uh, we also have Spider-Man Wave One. This Build-A-Figure is one of our favorites coming out next year. Fans have been wanting him for years. He's actually on display in the booth, but I thought I'd give you a look at you know one of the assets we developed based on the 3D sculpt, just to get kind of set the mood. So of course this is Wilson Fisk himself coming out in 2019. Just music is the goosebumps. figure. He's going to be anchoring our wave one for Spider-Man next year. We unveiled uh, some of the other figures earlier this year. We've got a modern Silver Sable there, with as, as well as a modern Black Cat with a really cool whip accessory. We've got the new Symbiote Spider-Man and Red Goblin. For any of you Spider-Man fans out there, Dan Slott's last run on The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, Go Down Swinging, it was called, so it introduced Norman Osborn merging with Carnage symbiote, and he turned into the Red Goblin, so we have those two figures to battle out amongst themselves, and then a classic 90s comic book character, Night Thrasher, he was leader of the New Warriors, he comes complete with batons, backpack, and an actual skateboard that he can stand on and, and ride around on. And we've got two more figures to be revealed in a few days at Luca Comic Con, so stay tuned for that. We have a few comic two-packs coming out that we revealed. So on the left there, we have Hydra Supreme and 
Armin Zola based on this latest run when um, you know timelines got messed up and Steve Rogers was actually in Hydra all along. So that's the Supreme Leader cap there. And then we have a classic Spider-Man and Kraven two pack from the Kraven's Last Hunt. Very famous, very beloved storyline from back in the day. So an updated classic Kraven with a new face sculpt. You know, he's really menacing looking and he has that uh, classic costume as well. So more comic two packs coming. We were up north, uh, for us anyways, uh, in Canada earlier this year, and we revealed these. We're not saying where they're going necessarily, but Wendigo will be a Build-A-Figure in some wave. And then we'll also have Guardian from Alpha Flight coming out, as well as Mystique, a really classic X-Men villain. You know, uh, the first time we've done a classic Mystique in Six Inch Legends. So this is our, this is our little uh, uh, journey. You know, we first, we, Patrick and I and the rest of the Hasbro team, we sit in Rhode Island which is the smallest state uh, in America. And this is a look at our office in the center there. We have Mr. Potato Head. You know, we have the Dunkin' Donuts uh, Convention Center. I've probably never heard of it, but uh, the, the Boston Bruins minor league hockey team plays there. So it's maybe beautiful. It's beautiful. Right right but so, you know, it's basically the same place from Rhode Island to London. You guys have a lot of similar type of things, you know. Um, <laughs> Sorry, so, that's, uh, that's not true. It's not true? Rhode Island to London. Oh. Yes. That's not possible, mate. Come on, London, let's make some noise here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. We are so happy to be here and get us out of Rhode Island. Thank you for having us. <laughs> so we thought, let's do some local reveals. So last year, in this very auditorium or close by, we unveiled the uh, Black Knight figure. And we, of course, we've had Captain Britain um, previous years ago. So we'll try to give you uh, guys another you know, local. How about that? So as you know, Halloween is right around the corner. Get your trick-or-treating ready. Here I brought my friend Jack O'Lantern from 2016 to help us. But in the spirit of Halloween, I went back to find an old issue. Captain America 253, Return of Baron Blood. Does anyone remember kind of what was going on back in this issue? So Baron Blood is this vampire, very, you know, on theme for Halloween. But basically what happened here was that Captain America happened to be traveling in England and he had to fight Baron Blood. And he, someone came to his defense to step in and that is Joey Chapman as the Union Jack. The aptly named Union Jack, might I add. So, yes, Union Jack is a, you know, he's been a West Coast Avenger, he's been a great superhero. We actually did a Union Jack figure 10 years ago, but we thought 10 years is too long. We need a new updated version of Union Jack. So for the first time in the Avengers assortment in 2019, all new updated Union Jack. Pretty sweet here. Yeah! We've got, his, we've got all his pouches and his belt there. He's got his trademark uh, weapons there, so a really fun figure. He's one of our design team's favorites, so we can't wait to get him out in the line. How about one more? Hey, yeah, one more local one. Point. The card deserves the second uh, reveal. All right, this one, this one, and please indulge me. Like you know, we love comics, we love backstories and lore. So this one takes a little bit of a setup. But if anyone remembers. Citizen V, this was, you know, I had to look this up, I actually didn't remember this. So, <laughs> Citizen V was part of the V Battalion, John Watkins, right? He was part of the British intelligence and they kind of fought evil uh, back in World War II. So he was a great hero from back in the very, very early days of the comics. So, he actually fought the 12th uh, Baron Zemo, Heinrich Zemo, and unfortunately, Zemo got the better of him. So, you know, uh, John had to, to kind of go away there. But, not all is good for villains because uh, Heinrich Zemo got his comeuppance later on when he was fighting the Avengers and Captain America, and then he, you know, met his untimely end. So then what happened? Like, why am I telling you all this? Well, Heinrich Zemo's son, the 13th Baron Zemo, Helmut Zemo, right, has, is now ascended to become one of Captain America's core adversaries over the years. And so we did this great uh, Baron Zemo comic figure in 2014 as part of the Winter Soldier line. But, as you comic fans I know are well aware, Baron Zemo had another alternate ego, right? When he led a team, which they were first disguised as heroes, but then they later revealed themselves to be villains, the Thunderbolts. Baron Zemo led this under the guise of a new mantle. Does anyone know what his name was? Citizen V, it's right there. We've been talking about it for five minutes. So here is Citizen V, Baron Zemo, an all new version. He's got a newly tooled kind of uh, sword there. He's got that trademark shoulder pads. This is uh, Citizen V to start your Thunderbolts team. We have Songbird from early this year, earlier this year in the Avengers wave. Hopefully we'll get to do the rest of the Thunderbolts sometime. I'm always amazed by your knowledge with, with comics. So. For me, commoner, let me get it straight, right? So you have a good guy who's called Citizen V. That's right. Fighting a bad guy who's called Baron okay. Zemo. Yes. Uh, Baron Zemo wins and kills Citizen V. That's correct. And then the Avengers kill Baron 
Zin. Correct. And then his son is also called uh, Zin. They're not very creative, but yes. yes. Right? <laughs> yep. Um, and then he dies as well. No, he basically then transforms into a new villain yeah. called Citizen, Citizen V. v. Because he was his father's uh, adversary. I know. Like, can you imagine, like the uh, the gall of him to take the uh, name of something, someone his father <laughs> kind of just that. So this is all great comic stuff, right? This is why. That's why we love being here. We don't have this stuff in Star Wars. <laughs> so we got two great reveals. We had Union Jack and Citizen V. So this is a look at our Avengers assortment we, uh, with reveals from earlier this year. So to recap, we have an all new Hercules. We have Living Laser, Nighthawk, Beta Ray Bill, a classic Loki uh, that we just revealed in Paris, and then just now Union Jack and Citizen V. So these are going to be part of our Avengers assortment in 2019. But no, I know what you're all asking. This is not a wave by itself. These are just characters in this assortment. So rest assured, we will have movie-based Avengers figures, but we can't show you them yet, unfortunately. I don't even know the name of the next Avengers film, but if and when we can start showing those, we will be uh, revealing them accordingly. Don't reveal them. Don't, don't reveal them. You don't want to get I don't want to get in trouble. I don't even, yeah, I don't even know. All right, so a, a big uh, round of applause for um, our European. Do we have any X-Men fans in the house? You know, interviews I give, you know I'm a huge X-Men fan. We've got a few X-Men uh, heavy hitters coming, and these are in the booth to check out. We've got two vehicle SKUs that are dedicated to X-Men next year as part of Marvel's 80th anniversary. We have Deadpool on a scooter there. I like to call this our carpool set because he comes with Squirrel Pool and uh, Dog Pool who can ride with him to work there. It's got a new uh, head, and we have a Hydra Bob head, which you can see in the package in the upper right-hand corner. If you have any Hydra figures lying around, you can make Hydra Bob. And what's really fun about this that we didn't get in the uh, picture here is that this item comes with a sticker sheet. So really fun, you know, uh, Deadpool-esque humor. Uh, we have an I Love Logan, I Heart Logan uh, bumper sticker. So these are stickers that come with it. You can customize your red scooter however you like. There's bullet holes, claw slashes, X-Men signs. So a really fun to play with. And speaking of fun, this was one of my favorite items to work Woo! on. Professor X in his hover chair. We unveiled this at New York Comic Con. He comes with a Shadow King alternate head. So for those of you who go out and get the Kingpin build a figure, you put that Shadow King head on the Kingpin body and you can have a Shadow King figure. This will come. People will ask like, oh, does he have legs? They have, can we see him in the, can he stand up? Yes, you have a fully functional Professor Xavier figure. We have a hover chair complete with a uh, effect stand. The chair stands up without the little blast effect, so if you don't want that, you don't have to display it. Um, and it comes with a Cerebro helmet with a psychic effect as well. So those are two Legends vehicles, and one of my favorite characters of all time, Gambit. He is going to be in the X-Men wave we announced. Wanted to share this asset with you as well. Shows off the beautiful sculpting uh, detail of this figure coming out next year. Peace. So we've got 
Who have we got here? We've got Wolverine and Rogue in 2016 in the Juggernaut Wave. We added Cyclops in the 2017 Warlock Wave. We added Psylocke in this year's Apocalypse Wave. And then as we just saw in 2019, we're gonna have Gambit and Jubilee. So I heard it up here from my front, from my friends from uh, the UK. It's Beast. X-Men Blue Team, check. Yeah. On to the next one. I love how they didn't even give you the chance to, to reveal no, it. They're, they're smart like, fans. Beast, they're smart right fans. I can't get anything by them. So yeah, this is a final look at the full X-Men wave. I think this is one of the strongest ones we've ever done. Gambit, Beast, Jubilee. Taliban is a massive builder figure, so this is going to be incredible for uh, spring 2019. That's that's my time. All right, right guys. Woo! The future convention. Yeah. Big, big, big thank you to Patrick and Ryan. A round of applause, please. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Question, no, I was going to say, yeah, so guys, it's a great, great opportunity uh, for you guys to ask any questions. So if you guys have any questions, I would like to ask you to line up here. Uh, we have some time for some Q&A. Uh, so please come forward. Uh, for me, Q here. You guys can ask any questions you want to. Uh, right here, right here. Any questions to either Ryan, either Patrick on both of uh, and uh, and Marvel. Uh, Okay. Go ahead. Sailbarge. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Great <laughs> That's not a, Those are just statements. That's not a question. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you mean. No. Any so, news these packages to sell what can you So I wanted to share news. We have no new news, unfortunately. So, but it's the same situation. We are committed. We are going to get the sail barge here by the time it ships next February. No new details to share, but again, we're hard at work. We are going to make it happen. So as soon as we have details, we will share them. We know that our great fans in Europe want that part just as much. We want to get it to you. We're just working out the logistics. So as soon as we have news, we'll share it. Trust me, I've been asking the same question like every single week, and he hates me for that. So <laughs> I told you they want it. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, we're going to make it happen. Hi, guys. Uh, just want to ask a quick question about what we can do to make the sound of those Yes. Um, Stopping down the uh, target exclusives uh, and make it more general as you can players to get the other ones that get from underneath like eBay and so on. What are you looking for that? So a couple parts to that answer. One is that exclusives, we know that they're a challenge, and so we're constantly trying to work on that. They do play a useful role because the figures that we get up by exclusives are sometimes uh, too variant or too niche to do by a mainline, so it allows us to get more figures in the line. But we know that it is a pain point for fans outside of the U.S., and so, you know, I've been telling fans in the booth, we got together last year, we're getting together again. Uh, we bring all of our markets from the EU here to London, including the UK team. We all sit together and talk about issues like this. Exclusives are one of them. Uh, how they work is that uh, if they're an exclusive to a retailer in the US, if that retailer exists in the UK, then it can be exclusive through them. Otherwise, it can go anywhere. So we know that hasn't always made it through, but we're gonna improve that in the future. Absolutely. Hi, my name is Brandon. I'm an uh, administrator on the Marvel Legends UK group, and I'm also here at Collections on uh, Instagram. Good to see you again, yeah, my friend. How's your hair last year? Last year. Um, just a big thank you for coming back with Patrick and yourself, Ryan. It's uh, always a pleasure to have you here in London. Thank you. Uh, I had a few questions. Um, the first was um, about the future of distribution in the UK. Um, as you know, there is a huge, huge hunger for uh, more Marvel Legends in the UK. Um, if we could see more of that, it would be amazing. It would be an idea around what avenues we're pursuing. Yeah. So you see that we tell me. And I will take that one. So, yeah. uh, we'll and that one. I'll give it to the UK team. No, just kidding. Uh, so basically, I think you know, just the fact that we are here to this year with a bigger group versus last year, it shows you guys how much committed we are to our European fans as well, and how we're doing great, great progress. Um, you know, I cannot say where and in which, uh, in which retailers you can find, but our team are dedicated and working to getting this uh, a bit better. I mean, um, I, I have a fan today, so I thank you very much. I'm, trying, I'm starting to find more and more figures. Um, the team work with, uh, with new channels. Uh, we have uh, new uh, key account uh, managers who are working on developing uh, our channel strategy. We have a new um, dedicated resource um, in many markets. Um, so the UK, for example, has dedicated resources on our fan channel, on our fan products, on our fan brands, um, both for kids and adults. Um, so we are working on that, and you will see uh, this 
start more, like, having more and more water coming through Eagle, uh, through other plastic uh, retailers as well. So definitely we're, we're hearing that and we're working on that. Thank you. And then two questions as well for yourself, Ryan. Um, the first was about the future of the 12 inch, sorry, the, yeah, the 12 inch line. Um, the possibility of maybe getting some 6 inch scale characters in the 12 inch line, a giant anime or anything like that. Um, also, if there was any more potential for the 10th anniversary line, because that was definitely a huge hit with the photo of technology, filling in the gaps. My MCU display looks a million times better than it did a year ago, thanks to that. So. So the first question um, in terms of doing like larger scale figures, uh, and that's something we always are looking at. If you had told me two years ago we'd be doing motorcycles and Professor X cover chairs, I'd say no, that's not in the plan, but somehow we got it. So it's always something we're looking at, you know, how can we do smaller characters and larger characters. So certainly that's something we'd, we'd love to be able to do in the future. And then your second question was, remind me. About the, um, yeah, the MCU, the future the MCU. Yes, yes. So the, the first the, the ten year the first ten years line was a great pleasure to work on. You know, Marvel put a lot of marketing effort behind it. And so yes, we are gonna continue to look for strategic opportunities to go back and do more movie figures that we've never before been done, as well as meaningful updates because we know that list is, you know, nowhere near complete. So I'd say definitely keep your eyes peeled in the future to fill in those holes in your uh, MCU shelf. Thank you so much again. Thank you. And see you next year. Every time. Hi. Hello. Hi. Apocalypse, Magneto, and Sabretooth. We definitely need more villains. 
you know, he's on that list of, uh, of great ones to do, so I'd say definitely stay tuned, and we are trying to put more villains in the line. Can, can you show me your t-shirt? Yeah, you're really into villains, right? Because like, this guy has a Decepticon t-shirt as well, so it's like more villains, more Decepticons, more uh, villains in Star Wars at the moment. Love it. Cheers, at the moment. Thanks. I'm glad people were asking me that question at first, and I was like, rack of my brain, who's dark and sinister? I don't know. Ah, so glad that we're going today. Hi, guys. Basically, any human faces, essentially, like a Boba Fett, for example, the photo reels that go wouldn't change it at all. So any characters with a helmet like Boba Fett or Stormtrooper, Darth Vader, won't have it because they don't need it. But any human or alien creature like Chewbacca will have it. There's no contractual issue. So that is the standard moving forward on Black Series and Vintage starting in 2019. And Ryan for Legends? Yeah, same for Marvel. The character has, you know, eyeballs and... Basically, we can do it, so. It doesn't matter about the nose situation, just eyeballs in the mouth. Awesome, thanks guys. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you so, so much. Thank you very much. That was the last question. Before we, we finish, um, these guys don't know it, but I would like to bring up the UK team on stage as well, uh, just to thank them as well uh, for making this uh, possible. Uh, yeah, so come guys, check out the Hasbro booth. We have amazing things going on. Or just stand up, just stand up. Get out of way. A round of applause for our yeah. UK team. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks to all of you, like and we say it all saying, the time, but like it's all for you. We love hearing the passion, we love meeting with you guys, so thank you so much for everything that you do for the line. Thank you, come see us on our way.